Uh, almost. So, yeah. Oh, you got me. I know I'm sorry, I know I'm sorry, I just saw it too, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Who got the today? Not really. Something that. A little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, hey, could you get some more chairs out? Well, Ready? I got some last minute. I had some emails that were like, can we still come? It's like, yeah, come on in because yeah. then I had some the to cancel. So oh, yeah, I knew I knew that was going to happen. So I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll make it work. Okay. Um, People are excited to do something. Yeah. Let's turn this into a thing. Yeah. All right. How are you guys? Great. I mean, Good. full health today. There's no back or bathroom. We're just all still up here. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon. Can everyone hear me okay? Or do I need a microphone break? Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. The microphone. Yes. Okay. We will use that. It's, I'll just stand right over okay. here. There you go. Hello. Just call me Vanna White. No. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Sarah Freeman. I am the Vice President of Business Development here at the Credit Union, and I have the privilege of overseeing our Truity Travels Group. Um, we, as many of you know, that have been with us historically, we have gone through lots of transitions with our travel. And um, right now we are partnering with Kenny Judd from Simply Travel, who is helping us do trips for you all as you gallivant around the globe which people are definitely doing and i would say from our turnout today um a lot of people are ready to go some places who's ready to travel everybody right or as someone said earlier i'm just window shopping for travel so we can do that as well um on behalf of the credit union thank you so much for coming and thank you for being members of the credit union we hope that you are members of the credit union i did bring today just a quick reminder there was a piece on your chair um, we do have a 5.25 right now for deposits. And um, if you have some, we would love for you to bring them to us. If there are other places, we feel like we have some great rates and some good opportunities for you. So because of um, members like you, because of those deposits that we hold, those are, those are the reasons that we can offer lower rates on loans and credit cards and offer opportunities like Truity Travel to um, our members. So it's kind of a, we are a cooperative, right? So the more you do with us, the more we get to do for you, the more I get to do these kinds of events. It, um, it really works well and works in tandem. So we're certainly glad to have you all here today. If you have any questions about the credit union, I'm gonna be here the whole time and afterwards, and we'd be happy to answer those. But otherwise, you're really here to hear from this man, Kenny Judd, as he takes us um, on a trip. So, Kenny. Thank you very much. There you go. We hit the lights. Um, and I can say 5.25, I've recently been talking to some other institutions in Hot Springs, and I can't find anything below eight. So um, that's not a plug even for the credit union is saying I, I, I know, I know, I'm just saying. I hear you. I'm looking at uh, multiple things too. So, um, but simply travel. So some of you 
have been to a couple of these presentations. I've been coming here for well over a decade doing presentations, uh, helping you, uh, you know, kind of plan travel. I was the regional director and director of sales for Colette for uh, about a decade, uh, but I started off as a rep here locally. Um, the reason that I transitioned out is the young lady here in the middle um, who actually just signed a four-year full ride to uh, Southern Miss. So I am now an Eagle who will be watching her play volleyball. So we're very excited about that. Uh, but I bring that up because one of the reasons, obviously, when you do what I do for Colette, and I still have a tremendous relationship, and we are offering a couple of their trips, um, is is the travel that goes into that. And so this gave me the opportunity to be a little bit more flexible. Um, now, some of the trips that we're going to talk about, we've touched on previously. Some of those are still available to go this year. We're also going to talk about some different things, and I want to talk about motor coach trips as well because I know I've been up here a couple of times since we've been doing this, and people have brought that up. So we're going to go through a few trips fairly quickly. I'm not going to go into the depth that I typically do. Um, one reason is I'm going to send out an email with all of these different links. I think that there is – um, a perception that if we don't talk about it in this particular room, then we can't do that. I have had some people call me. Uh, we've booked Africa. We've booked Australia. Um, I think Japan. I booked somebody on Japan recently. And so there are opportunities to do whatever it is that you want to do from a travel perspective. You know, some of these are I have other groups that are already traveling. Uh, for instance, I have a group out of Pennsylvania doing Yellowstone. Um, and so we customize that trip a little bit where it's really focused on Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. Um, and so, you know, we have a lot of those things on the website as well. Um, I've also gotten some calls about updating my website. The website is very updated um, from a perspective of the trips that we have that are new, but we also leave some of our old ones on there. And I know that gets confusing at times, uh, but the reason that we do that is we have a lot of groups that actually will call in and say, hey, I want to repeat that trip. I love that you have that. And then we'll update it with the new itineraries and new dates. So some of those tours I leave up there because people want to know what kind of trips we are able to do, not necessarily just what are going. And so I thought I wanted to address that as well. I've had some emails and some calls, and I appreciate that because I want as much feedback um, and make my website as dynamic. But you know, at the same time, I work with specific groups and someone, a motor coach. If you go to my motor, my motor coach uh, part, you know, I have day trips out of Texas that go to the Rangers game. Well, that's because I have groups down there that just want to do those kind of things. And so I wanted to address that, but we're going to talk a little bit about that. One of the ones that we talked about previously is the Alaska cruise, and we still do have space. This is um, going fast. We are down to probably about eight cabins left. Uh, and so I did want to touch on that just because Alaska is the most repeated destination. Um, and this is going to be a September trip. Uh, this is one of my, we have a, a big group. We actually have two dates that are going to go one in August and one in September. I actually have all groups out of Oklahoma. So um, one out of Midwest city and one out of Oklahoma city. Um, and so we'll have the opportunity to do that. It is an inside passage trip. We're going to do a pre-night in Seattle. So we'll have the opportunity to bring you in. You'll have a, uh, an overnight there in downtown Seattle. You won't uh, embark on your trip till about three or four the following next day. So you kind of have that next morning in Seattle to embrace yourself. Uh, and then of course, we'll start that inside passage. One of the things that are so wonderful about uh, any of a cruising, of course, is breakfast, lunch, and dinner are included. Um, there is a package that I'll talk about towards at the end. We're going to stop in Ketchikan, of course, very well known. It is the silver salmon season in September. So um, if you go on that September date, you'll have the opportunity to see that. This attracts both salmon and the bears in the area. So you're going to see wildlife throughout. Um, I know for me, that's one of my favorite aspects when I travel, um, getting the opportunity to see the cute and cuddlies in their local environment. And of course, there are so many excursions. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. I get people that sign up for these trips and then they immediately, I, I need to know the excursions. I need to know them right now. Sometimes I can release them. Sometimes I have to wait a little bit depending on how far out. Uh, but there's over 66 excursions on a seven day trip. So you can imagine each port, you're going to have tons of options. Um, once you book, we'll actually send those out to you. Uh, the Lumberjack Show is one of my favorites uh, that I always put in here in my brochures because um, while they're all Lumberjacks, 
those shoes always crack me up because I don't remember lumberjacks wearing those as they're rolling on the logs. But um, it, there are all kinds of different excursions. Uh, of course, the wildlife, the, there are naturalists on board uh, with you. So as you have stops, as you do these excursions, they're there with you to really embrace the wildlife, the, the habitat, and tell you all about that it, what it has to offer. Of course, Endicott Armandals Glacier. Um, this is going to be during some of the scenic cruising as we're out on the ocean, traveling through um, just spectacular glaciers and beauty. Uh, I've always heard people talk about the quiet and then you'll hear these thundering crashes. And some of that is actually the glaciers breaking off as they they slam into uh, the water. So um, and of course, we'll have a stop off in Juneau. Uh, the history behind that, uh, one of the major cities here along the Inside Passage and just the beauty throughout uh, of course here is Mendehall Glacier. Skagway kind of taking a step back in time, if you will, into some of that um, you know, the, the gold rush era. And this is probably uh, the opportunity to do one of the most popular, if not definitely the most popular excursion, which is an all day event, which is actually doing uh, the White Pass and Yukon train Alaska. So as you can see, there's no roads that run alongside of this. So it actually takes you through some of the areas that you can't see. One of my favorite things about trains, and I've been doing this uh, a long time. And when I do these presentations, uh, there's a company called um, Rocky Mountaineer. Uh, anybody ever heard of Rocky Mountaineer? So most of the people in the travel industry have come from Colette. So you kind of know everybody. Uh, and and actually a guy that I took over for his job when he left, he went to work for Rocky Mountaineer. And it used to crack me up because I would follow him in a presentation. He'd have 150 people. And then I would walk in to talk about land tours and I'd have 30 people. And it just used to crack me up. I'm like, people love trains. Um, this is one of the reasons why, as you have the opportunity to take the trains, it will take you into areas that you cannot physically get by car. So it gives you completely different views uh, and some of the unbelievable unbelievable, picturesque lakes, the mountains, the valleys, and of course, the wildlife that never stops. And then as we come into towards the end of this, you're going to hit Victoria. Uh, so Butch Art Gardens, one of the most popular we're going to spend, uh, and you'll have the opportunity to visit uh, Butch Art Gardens as we visit. Um, we'll take It'll take you right to Victoria Island. Um, yes, we are in Canada, so I do recommend everyone bring their passports. However, technically you don't have to have it to be able to go on this tour. Um, I am kind of telling everybody, if you need to get your passport updated, now is the time to do it. They've actually caught up on a lot of those passports. Um, some people are actually able to get theirs within a six week turnaround. Please don't hold me to that because as we know, the government can slam the brakes on anything very, very quickly. So right now they're caught up right now. They are able to get those turned around. So if you are in need in the next year to get your passport updated, now is the time to do that. Um, and of course, so, uh, we'll have the opportunity to see the bald Eagles and this is September 14th. Uh, like I said, there's about eight to 10 cabins left. Uh, we've had the opportunity to really fill this up. We also have an August date, um, if you're interested in that double occupancy, $32.99, that does include your um, cancel for any reason, your flight, your cabin, um, as well as your pre-night. So I was able to book this further out to really get a good deal. Um, I think I only have until Friday on this particular trip before they release my space. And so all that means is whatever promotion that I had you under, it'll just be whatever it is now. And I'll basically have to book you after Friday as any kind of normal, you're just booking the cruise. So we're kind of adhere to their rates at that point. So um, if you are interested in this, please let me know very, very quickly. I'll get you all the information. We'll get you booked and all that good stuff. You do have the opportunity. Um, this is an overall 54% savings for the Princess Plus package. It's $420. It also includes your um, a drink package, which, um, you know, I usually tell people if you plan to have more than a couple of drinks a day, then this is a really good package. If you're not a big drinker, you may not be interested, but it also gives you Wi-Fi, crew appreciation, 
to premium desserts. I mean, look out. So I know on these cruises, nobody's there to lose weight. So, uh, but if you are eating those pr two premium desserts each day, guess what? You also have new fitness classes too per cruise. So you can work those right off. Uh, and of course the new unlimited juice bar. So this just takes care of some of those things that you don't have to deal with. Um, and of course the new medallion, which is anybody been on the cruise where they give you the wristband and then you, it, that's how you get around everywhere. You don't have to worry about your keys deactivating and all those. First time I took my kids a few years back to Disney, that was kind of the beginning of um, that process. So you wear your wristband, that's pretty much your key everywhere you go. So you don't have to worry about losing your key and those kind of things. Colors of Morocco, we're going to touch on just briefly because uh, I had a couple of requests uh, that wanted to hear a little bit more about it. I know that it sounds like a dangerous destination in today's world uh, in the news, but I can tell you it was one of the up and coming, um, specifically not just with Colette, but in the destination itself. This really is a fantastic uh, trip itself. It is a small group tour, so that means it maxes out at 19 to 24 people. On average with Colette, and this is a Colette product, um, the Explorations package averages around 15 to 17 passengers. So you have the opportunity to do some unique things that you can't do in a group of 40 or 50 people. You stay at a little bit unique hotels. You get some what they call you know, in, uh, immersive experiences that maybe you don't have the opportunity to do in some of those bigger groups. And so I do always like to point out this is a small group tour. And I have another small group tour that I have just kind of created as a small group tour a little bit later that we'll talk about. Um, but this overall activity level is a three. And so a lot of people ask me that, oh, it's Morocco. Um, you know, yeah, you're going to be walking around. I usually tell people on average one to two miles a day. That is not like straight. You're having to walk, you know, one to two miles every single day. We're wearing you out. Um, but throughout the day, standing at periods, um, you know, kind of things like that, it may be about one to two miles. So that's kind of that activity level. They don't have any fives and they don't have any ones. Ones are pretty much asleep. Alaska is a two, just to put it in perspective for you, because you do have to walk around a little bit. Uh, one, you know, literally somebody's just carrying you around. I don't know how they have the men, you know, and you're in the beds. That's that's about the equivalent of a one, uh, which they don't have any. But this really is an all encompassing tour. Um, one of the things that I love and probably the scariest, but the most highly anticipated and the thing that t people talk the most about I was on day eight and nine, a Sahara desert camp. Um, we, you know, when I, when I was working with Colette, they rolled out Finland and one of the nights you get to sleep in an igloo and that became the most popular. So if you are a little bit adventurous, if you want something unique and a little bit different, these are the types of experiences you get with those small group tours. And so that's one of the reasons that I love to offer these out. Um, as we you know, we'll have that overnight flight. Um, after you land in Casablanca, we'll travel you right over to Rubat, which is, uh, the capital of Morocco. And of course, all of the guides that you have there are local. They're going to really dive in uh, to the different aspects of the tour, giving you that culture, what it's like. Of course, the mausoleum of Muhammad V. Um, this is, you know, not in, in addition to the king's tomb itself, also contains the tombs of his two sons. So you'll hear a lot about the history, um, you know, the, the white facade. If you've never been in any of these, uh, areas they really are fascinating um and they do a tremendous job of keeping them clean and really um embracing their history and so you'll have the opportunity to learn a little bit about that um in route to fez we're going to stop off at a winery you didn't think you'd go to morocco and have a winery but you're going to get a winery and a tasting tour and learn a little bit about the unique grapes that they grow here um how they are able to make that we'll walk through the vineyard the cellar and really take in some of the vines and the vintages that they have to offer here. Um, and then we're going to arrive for the next three nights in one of the holiest cities in all of the world. And that is Fez, of course. Uh, we'll learn about the history as the center of not just religion, but also government, philosophy, medicine. Uh, but of course, religion as it is one of the holiest cities in the world. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to talk about that. It's really known as the Mecca of the West here in Fez. And then we're going to take a four by four Jeep uh, and some of the transportation out to the Sahara. So you're getting three nights in Fez. One of those days you actually have free, uh, which they will have a couple of options for you, or you can just enjoy the day to yourself. Um, with these explorations, they do like to work in 
uh, some free time because everybody likes to have their own experiences. Of course, the tour guide is with you from beginning to end. So we're not cutting you loose and you just run around there. There'll be somebody to kind of help. Hey, here's what I'm doing today. Here's what I would recommend. Here's where you might want to go. Uh, but this is one of those experiences, um, as I talked about, that immersive experience. Um, and this is uh, that unbelievable experience in the Sahara Desert. Uh, people really love this stunning, huge orange yellow as the sun rises. Um, of course, you get a little camel ride. Um, if you've never ridden a camel, it is absolutely an experience you must have because um, they are feisty little fellas and uh in incredibly clean once you get on them let me tell you about that as they spit at you and everything else um no th it was fantastic i had the opportunity to ride them in egypt and truly i truly did enjoy it um but really learning around you know 3.3 million square miles here in the sahara um and so you know even though it seems like there's not a life there's about 70 different mammals um, in the area that actually call the Sahara Desert home, including foxes, hyenas, gazelles, and so much more. You also get to meet some of the nomadic communities in the area to learn about their day-to-day -day life, the people that still leave, uh, live in these areas, as well as the changing of the seasons and what they have to go through. So again, in these smaller group tours, you have just unique opportunities to really dive into the culture from a day-to-day -day perspective um, and, you know, how the traditions have changed over time and what their day-to-day -day is like. And of course, return to camp as the sun sets in the dunes. Um, you'll have your turn, tour manager today and learn a little bit more about the importance of Islam in uh, Morocco, as well as the day-to-day -day life in the sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, again, it, it seems a little bit scary here out there, but I can promise you it is a incredible experience that people go nuts for. We'll return um, after that and we'll arrive in the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Aya Ben Hadou. Uh, and you can see some of the buildings and the fortresses, the defense walls of the Moroccan fortress that has been built, the corner towers, really given it the opportunity. And all of these fortresses and walled in cities are always built on hills in very strategic areas. You know, a lot of people think because of the moats, you know, they were putting alligators in there. Well, actually, the issue is many people couldn't swim back in those days. And if they could, as military, you know, you would wear the armor. Well, as you can imagine, that armor was heavy. So the moats weren't about the alligators that I think that, you know, as, as I was growing up, I remember, you know, you see that in a movie or it, it depicted, but really it's about strategy of where you wanted to locate it and how challenging it was to be able to take these on. And one of these is also building into the mountains so that you had views from all angles. So they'll tell you a little bit about uh, the fortified cities and the defense mechanism that they had. Uh, and then we're going to arrive in Marrakesh, of course, um, a former imperial city, very well known for the shopping, uh, you know, some of the Neolithic times you can still see, uh, but it's also referred to as the red cities and you'll be able to, or the red city, as you'll kind of be able to see that through a lot of the colors. And it always makes me laugh because we talk about the red city and then right out of the gates, you throughout the city itself, it's known, but they have some unbelievable architecture and truly bright colors and the way that they go in and sh showcasing the beauty and the heritage. And so we'll learn a little bit about that. We'll visit uh, the ancient palace to walk through featuring some of the painted wood, vibrant colors, over 150 rooms as we walk throughout here. Absolutely breathtaking. And then we'll join a local women's cooperative um, and a very interactive cooking class. And these again are those experiences, that immersive experience with some of the local, um, you know, for me, it's uh, unfortunately my wife uh, will not see this video. So I can say this, she can't cook. And so to go to a lot of these, um, it's okay. She'll say the same thing. So, uh, but it is, and I tell her all the time, I didn't marry her for cooking. Uh, but it is one of those, having the opportunity to see these local cooking classes where you're interactive, you're engaging with them. They're teaching you how to go about it. Uh, it makes a lot of fun and to this day i took her to france and now she makes a tremendous creme brulee because that was a cooking class that we got where she actually got pulled up by the chef uh, and actually learned how to do it and so uh, we always love those but women's in this area spent up to six months here learning how to cook to manage a restaurant so it is not just they own it it is something that is very strategic how they go about it uh, you'll learn a little bit about that and you know it it takes in people that were disadvantaged, um, whether it be single mothers, um, uneducated women, you know, this gives them an opportunity to make a better life for themselves. Uh, but it is very much a schooling and a learning. So you're going to learn a lot about that in this area. 
Uh, and then we'll depart Marrakesh and, of course, arrive in Casablanca. Uh, Casablanca is an important port for Africa. It is the city's main business hub for entrepreneurs. Uh, so you'll learn a little bit about that. And of course, we know the famous Casablanca movie, which you will have the opportunity uh, to learn a little bit more about. We'll visit the largest functioning mosque um, in Africa. And this is the Hassan II Mosque. And if you've never been in a mosque, they are spectacular. As you walk through, um, washing your hands, washing your feet, understanding the history behind it. Uh, but they are just absolutely one of the most spectacular buildings as you walk through. Um, and so we'll learn a lot about that. And then we are going to have a farewell toast this evening before you fly back. So that is the Morocco trip. Um, the rates are 5649 I really am pushing a lot of these bigger tours this year and into the first quarter of next year. Um, my inside sources, uh, as I said, the, the travel industry is is vast, but also very small. Um, I understand that I've been told inflation is not a problem and that prices are not going up and things are wonderful. However, on a day-to-day -day, you know, aspect, I see a little bit different. And in the travel industry, I'm seeing the recovery from COVID really come back um, with the travelers. With that also comes cost. I'm seeing prices jump at the end of next year. So to explain it, the way product works is you really contract about 18 months at a time. So moving into kind of May, June 1st of next year, all of those prices and those contracts will have expired. And so into the first quarter, I'm I would say up into that May, so going into the mid-second quarter, but really jumping to the third, you're going to see pricing jump up to 30% in some of these destinations. Um, and I tell people that with the expectations of, you know, well, I'll do it later. I'm going to wait on that one. And I'm telling people, don't wait. If you know there's a destination you want to go to, now is the time to book it because these things are jumping. Um, this Iceland trip that I'm about to talk to, is a thousand dollars more next year the exact same trip for colette um and again you know prices have moved and things like that so i just like to prepare people like now is the time to travel um and i had so many i think the reason it has jumped back so well is because so many people during covid thought they were going to get to travel they didn't and now it's like don't wait go while you can go embrace it and enjoy it um and so just to kind of give you some perspective there are some really good rates out there right now. However, over the next couple of years, you're probably going to see those increase a little bit. Um, and so this one in particular is one of the most popular destinations, has been for about the last five years. Iceland as a whole has been incredibly popular. Uh, I think I give it, I really, about 2010, anybody remember the volcano in Iceland? that went off and all of the flights got grounded. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait, Iceland, what is there? And then shows started filming there. And then, so it kind of built and they really um, pushed hard from a tourism perspective to bring that back. So we have Iceland's Magical Northern Lights, seven days, I have 11 meals. This one is November 9th through the 15th. This is a very easy trip. I love it because you're getting two nights in Reykjavik, one in at the beginning and then one at the end, and then you're getting three nights in Vik. Vik being the most southern tip of Iceland, and it gives you tremendous opportunity to see the northern lights. Of course, in travel, I never guarantee anything. Um, of course, weather and all of those things. And I always say, I, my Oklahomans out of all people cannot complain about weather because I have lived in a lot of different destinations um, I've traveled all over the world. And as soon as I hear the old, well, if you don't like the weather, I immediately stop and go, that is not true until you've lived in Oklahoma, because now they have earthquakes, 95 degree heat by the same day, we might have tornadoes and maybe a, a hailstorm mixed in with an ice warn, warning the next day. I was like, you really have no idea. Um, you know, what we're, we're now getting earthquakes from, you know, all the way through Arkansas, people are filling them into Arkansas. So, uh, it is one of those things that I always laugh about. Uh, but you do have very, very good opportunities, specifically in, uh, specifically in Vik, where you are away from the city lights. There's about 350,000 people in Iceland. About 200,000 of them live in Reykjavik. So that kind of gives you the perspective. That's why it has become a, um, a true uh, 
favorite spot of Hollywood from a movie perspective. There's so much natural land. It really is a beautiful country for them to shoot different movies and, uh, of course, all that that goes in. So with that being said, we'll have the opportunity to see the Geezers, which is actually where the original name Geyser comes from. It actually begins here. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to see some of the different types of uh, hot springs. This one is ranges in from about 90 to 150 feet uh, here at the Stroker's Explosive Vertical Spout. Uh, and of course, throughout is the Gulfos Waterfalls. You're going to see waterfalls throughout this destination. It has a very unique um, tectonic plates and how they come together. And so with that, this destination is known as the Golden Falls because as the sun hits it and the way that it changes, absolutely breathtaking. Here you see a 100-foot double cascade uh, that travels throughout. We'll visit the Thingular National Park. Um, this is the nation's most historic uh, area and is also an UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, really, here the Icelanders gathered in 930 AD, establishing the world's first parliament. Uh, and so it really does have a lot of his history behind it, a lot of historical significance. Uh, of course, we'll visit the Lava Exhibition uh, ex Center. We're just going to go with center as I'm talking. Uh, learning about some of the, the history and, again, those unique um, hot springs, the thermal, the volcanoes all below it. Uh, it is really fascinating to learn about these. And there are a lot of interactive displays, and that's one of the things that I love. Um, you get to kind of read and take your own self-guided tour throughout there. We'll make a stop off all at the Cellulans Falls. Um, uh, this is one of the few waterfalls providing you with a walkway actually behind the falls. So if you look um, down where the waters are falling, this is everybody's favorite because if you are adventurous enough, um, there's a nice little walk pathway. I do tell people it can be slippery. Be careful as you're walking through there. Uh, but they do have the opportunity for you to actually walk in behind it. Um, you know, Iceland really known as the natural beauty. It does bring so much of that. Here's a perfect opportunity. Um, and so when you walk there, wear closed toed shoes. You're going to wear them throughout this trip, let me tell you. Um, and then we'll continue to Vik, as I talked about. This is the southernmost part of Iceland. It really gives you the opportunity to get away from the city lights. Um, but it also has so much beauty to offer you. We're going to have three nights here. Um, and each night we are going to go out and look for light. So it is one of those things. It's not like one night we're going to give it a shot. Each of those nights, including your first night that you arrive in Reykjavik, uh, which I didn't touch on, you're actually going to have a cruise to go out and look at the Northern Lights. So um, I shoot you straight. That first one's a little, that first day's a little rough. You have your overnight flight. We're going to give you some time to rest in the hotel. You're going to get dinner. Then we're going looking for Northern Lights because that is the purpose of this trip. Uh, so day four, we'll have, visit the rain is uh, Fi Ara, uh, and this is the black volcanic sand beach that so many people love. I probably don't have to tell you guys this, but stay out of the water because the tides are incredibly strong. Um, it seems like every time I go here, somebody tests that, and it's not usually our travelers; it's it's locals or it's those young vibrant backpackers that think that they're invincible that like to go over there. But um, these tides can be very, very strong. So, uh, but a beautiful opportunity for you to walk along some of these black volcanic beaches. Um, and then we're going to go visit the Skogar Museum, which contains an outstanding collection of all kinds of aspects of Icelandic uh, life farm, domestic artifacts, as well as you can see some of these turf built houses, um, housing over 15,000 artifacts in this region. You're really going to get to an in-depth look at the Icelandic heritage. Uh, the museum was founded in 1949 uh, and has continued to grow since then. Uh, and then we're going to head over to Skogafoss Falls. Uh, again, you're seeing a lot of the waterfalls. Um, this is one of the largest in all of Iceland. This waterfall has a width of 82 feet or so in width and a drop of a about 200 feet. Uh, so an incredibly powerful waterfall that you'll have the opportunity to learn a little bit about. Uh, and of course, on sunny days, full of rainbows and all that they have. Um, and then after dinner each night, we're going to have the opportunity to head back out and of course, look for the stunning Northern Lights. The Northern Lights tend to run on a cycle. So some of them, you know, every 12 years they're at their peak and then they come back down. Uh, we've already been kind of at the bottom. So now is the perfect time as we're kind of on our way back up to have the opportunity to see those northern lights um, and the different colors. You know, they're created by that oxygen, nitrogen and so weather plays a huge aspect in the northern lights. So down in Vik will give us the opportunity to see that. 
Uh, like I said, each night we'll go out after dinner um, and you're going to need a camera can pick it up. And I've seen some fantastic pictures that people have taken, uh, but you'll need that long exposure setting. So uh, I don't know if the iPhones quite as I, that's my camera when I travel um, has quite caught up to that. But for your photographers, that long exposure camera is the most important when trying to capture the Northern lights. It never fails though. There's always somebody on tour with a tremendous camera that'll pass those videos. Those are usually the guys I get next to and say, Hey, I'm going to need some of those pictures or Here's a secret, and if you tell anyone, oh, this is recorded, that's okay, though. I'll still deny it. Um, I go find the best postcard that I can, and I take a picture of it on my phone, and then I say, look at my unbelievable pictures I took. My wife thinks I take tremendous pictures on tour. Um, I have not told her the truth yet. Uh, and then we're going to head over to Skaftafell National Park. Uh, this is the Vault Nul Yurkut. Uh, this is the largest national park in Europe, uh, and so really fascinating land. The alpine environment you can kind of see throughout here, the highest mountains. Uh, and of course, this kind of the Vatanjol Kul uh, is the name that actually translates into water glacier. And so, and if I messed up any of those, none of you know the difference, anyways, because I don't even think the Icelandic people know what they're saying half the time. Um, and here we'll travel to uh, Yurkul Surlon. Uh, this is the glacier lagoon filled with floating icebergs. And all the have and of course one of the things that we get to do on here you're not just going to see the um the different glaciers but you're also going to have the opportunity to get into of course the blue lagoon so everybody loves that aspect of it uh you'll have the opportunity to change get in your bathing suit go out into the hot springs themselves and enjoy um we'll have a little bit of free time through one of our days We'll have dinner and we'll continue searching out for the Northern Lights. And then our following day, we will have the opportunity to travel out. So right now, this trip is $39.99 with land, air, taxes, everything. Like I said, next year, this price will be $49.99 for this exact tour. Um, at least that is the powers that be that are telling me right now. So if there's any of these destinations that you can think of, especially on the international scale, and even if it's not Morocco, Iceland, uh, any of these other ones, let me know. Um, we can talk about that. I can book you on with other groups. Um, I can help you with any of those travel destinations. Now, a couple of the local ones. Uh, this is one of our most popular one. We're going to have September 10th through the 14th. Uh, really, the ARC has become incredibly popular. We'll fly into Cincinnati. We'll have an opportunity to get settled in. We're going to get on the BB River boats. Uh, last year when I did this tour, I took 48 people and I was leading it down. The Cincinnati Reds were playing as we're on the Ohio River uh, and getting to eat dinner. And we go out, unbelievable night, beautiful area uh, down uh, along the Ohio River in Cincinnati uh, with all of the houses sitting up on the mountains. And then every time the Reds would hit a home run, the fireworks growing off uh, in September. So it made a perfect opportunity to visit that. The following day, we're going to head to the Ark itself, which was built as it is uh, in Genesis. And it really is fascinating. Anybody ever been to the Ark here? So if you have not been, this is truly an unbelievable experience. And we really focus on spending the majority of this day here. We have an included buffet lunch at uh, a wonderful food. Um, it's part of the kitchen there and there's food spots all over, but we have an included buffet. One of my favorite buffets I've had, and I'm not a big buffet person, uh, but it really has everything to offer. And the reason that we spend so much time here, it takes about three hours or so depending on who you are to go through the arc itself. Um, there are ramps everywhere. So there's no stairs that are an issue. Everything is a ramp, uh, but it really brings the story of the arc to life for you. Um, you know, for those that have questions, how could they do this? What was the, you know, they, one of the things that I love about the arc is they ask those questions and then they give their response to them. And so it's a very educational experience. Um, truly fascinating as you kind of learn about the art. So we'll spend the day here. You have lunch that is included. Um, there's also a petting zoo, uh, a garden that you have the opportunity to walk throughout and spend some time. So there is a ton to be offered. Uh, and then we'll head back to Cincinnati. You have a free evening. The following morning, we're going to head over to the Creation Museum. And we're going to spend the morning at the Creation Museum, uh, really diving into the historical, scientific, the interactive exhibits, all that it has. Uh, there is a lunch on your own if you are interested at Noah's Cafe. We finish up there about 1130, and then we are off to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. This is about an hour drive up to Dayton. Uh, this, for me, is one of my favorite parts 
of the trip. It is a fascinating uh, museum. It really does dive in. I mean, I we spend about four hours here, um, and I can tell you most people were telling me they wanted more time. It is a huge museum with four gigantic uh, warehouses, essentially, that you go through. Um, things all the way from, I mean, ev- from the beginning of flight to um, NASA, to Air Force One, of course, the wars that are involved in the Air Force and what part they played in. I had the opportunity to walk through Air Force One. Uh, so it really does, it, it is one of those stops that we put in there because uh, it's only an hour and it is, if you, has anybody been to this particular so it is It is one of my favorite museums that I've ever had the opportunity to travel. It does help that I have some friends in their Air Force. So, uh, But uh, for me, it's just an opportunity to, to really honor uh, the people that have served our country and what it means. Um, we'll head back that evening. And then the following day, we head to Louisville. Um, and yeah, if you're from there, it's Louisville. If you're from here, it's Louisville. Um, and so we'll spend a little bit of time here as we head. It's about an hour and a half this morning. We'll arrive uh about 10 o'clock or so uh, onto Main Street. We'll have a little bit of free time. Then we're going to have a tour of the Slugger Museum. Uh, Really get to swing into the baseball, the history of it, the unique bats, how they're made, the different types of bats, the specific ones that are ordered by the major leaguers themselves, uh, who they're sponsored by. I was laughing because I took 48 people from a church in Denton uh, to this, and we go to the Ark, and we go to the Creation Museum, and we do, you know, we were there during 40 days, 40 nights, of, uh, which is the largest spiritual concert uh, that takes place in the world, and all my little old church ladies were talking about the Louisville Slugger Museum. And it just cracked me up because they said, I didn't think I was going to like this, but that was so neat to learn about all the baseballers. Uh, And so we'll go in there. You can have the opportunity to have a personalized bat made. I have a couple. Um, However, do ship it back. TSA will not let you bring it on board. So uh, if you're flying, just give you a heads up about that. Be prepared to ship it back. Uh, to have a personalized bat, they ranged uh, from about $80 to $150, but, uh, you know, depending on what all you had done and the type of bat that you were having made. Uh, but you can do that. We uh, we have about an hour to an hour and a half uh, tour. Following that, we head over to the Kentucky Derby, which you'll see me posting some pictures this year uh, as I'm heading to the Kentucky Derby for the first time. Um, and so I'm very excited about that. Apparently we are going as Peaky Blinders. I don't know what that in really means yet, but, uh, I know my wife's excited about wearing a hat. So, uh, but we are going to go in, but you get to go in and learn a little bit about the Kentucky Derby, the history behind it. Um, and one of my favorite stops in this part is we have a local speaker today who used to work for Colette for a very long time, but previous to her tour managing job at Colette, she actually raised and took care of horses, including she has a fascinating background to one of the most historic races of all time. Uh, She actually raised and named the horse uh, that won. And so we have her come in that day. We do a little chat. She's going to have the opportunity to kind of relive that for you. In fact, I think by the end of it, she had about every person in there crying because of the story that she was telling uh, and how fascinating it was. And it is part of the Hall of Fame and the museum uh, as well. I don't want to spoil it and what the story is. And so uh, if you come along, it's a it's a fun day um, as we've had a tremendous journey and then we'll head back. Um, air, land, taxes, everything, $21.99. That is air out of Tulsa. Uh, we'll need at least 10 people from Tulsa to have group air. Otherwise, uh, we'll be able to book you just retail. But that does include everything from there. We have about 15 seats left on this particular date. So want to touch on that. And then one other, I had a request for a couple of domestic. We have our Faith and Country Tour. Um, this tour, so... Uh, One of the reasons when I got into this, I wanted to be able to build my own tours. Um, With that being said, part of that is is faith, but also, you know, honoring our veterans and the armed forces that allow us to do that. And so, you know, while the news is not great these days, we know it that there's still a lot of pride. Uh, And so we built a tour that's a little bit different than most when it comes to D.C. It is really talking about how this country was built on faith. And so with that, we kind of dive into the D.C. aspect, starting with George Washington, um, of course, the Constitution, uh, the in, you know the the independence, what that meant for them, how it was come about. But when they wrote the Declaration of Independence, 
and the Constitution, you know, what faith meant as a part of that. And so we take a little bit of a unique tour uh, through D.C. Of course, we start off right here at Mount Vernon, of course, the home of George Washington. As we have the opportunity to tour the grounds, learn a little bit about that, we'll have a local guide take us through the grounds. Um, and then we're also going to learn about and debunk some of the myths of George uh, as we dive in with that local guide. Um, and then we're going to head over to the Museum of the Bible. Uh, this is one of the most fascinating stops. People love this area. We're going to spend some time. Many tour companies don't do this, uh, but it explores the impact of the Bible, the word of Fod, uh, seen in this image. So we'll spend a couple hours here. And then, of course, we're going to head over to the famous National Archives. Uh, learning about the Declaration of Independence, you know, what it was meant. Uh, I think that, you know, for me, I have a degree from the University of Oklahoma in history. Um, accidentally, I took a bunch of classes and they said, hey, you're about to have a major in history if you just take a few more um, along with your communications major. So, of course, I now know more about Greek mythology than I ever thought I would, but that fell into some of those things I had to add into it. But um, learning about the history of our country, what it was founded on, but what they lived through to be able to foresee the future when they really wrote the Constitution. So we're going to have a guide today kind of take us through that, the Declaration of Independence, the Article of Confederation, uh, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Louisiana Purchase, um, you know, all of those things that are that are archived here. So we're going to go through and relive some of those. Of course, the Constitution and how it shaped our country, what the faith aspect of and what that meant. Um, and Jefferson specifically talking about, uh, you know, he was a huge supporter of the Virginia Bible study, which, um, you know, what that or society and what that meant for him is that anybody that was unable to afford a Bible, he believed you should have one. However, he was very controversial because he never fit into one denomination. He went to multiple churches as he traveled through because he also thought that there was some issues with the Bible, but he also found some tremendous teaching lessons. And so um, he did believe that everybody should have one. He was a big part of the Virginia Bible Society for that aspect of it, uh, but also was a little bit controversial in those times because he wouldn't commit to one uh, denomination, even though he vowed he absolutely believed in God. So uh, a very unique figure during this time that we'll learn a little bit about. Of course, we're going to take a sunset uh, tour of Je Jefferson Memorial. And if you have never done this in the evening, there is no better way to do that. So we're going to have a guide walk us through there uh, as we have a wonderful tour. Then the following morning, we're going to head out to see Arlington Cemetery for a little early morning uh, meditation. Of course, the eternal flame. Uh, we cannot leave without, you know, understanding the military women's memorial. Um, you know, when I was a young lad, I maybe didn't appreciate this as much. And now that I have all women in my house, including a dog, because I couldn't even get a male dog, uh, I was overruled. You know, you, I really do have an appreciation. We just had National Women's Day um, and those things. So we're going to stop off and visit a little bit of time here. Of course, the changing of the guard. Uh, the last time I was here is was in the absolute pouring rain, uh, and it did not affect them one bit, nor was it going to affect me. Uh, absolutely one of those things that you must see the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So we're going to spend a good amount of time here really embracing this area. And of course, Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, we're going to have guides through all this. So again, we're really diving into D.C., how it was shaped. Um, and of course, the WW2 uh, Memorial. And we are going to have the opportunity to see this in the evening. I always like to show this picture because again, walking through here, seeing the lights uh, represent how beautiful it is. Seeing some of these things in the evening is the best way to go. Then we're going to head over to our favorite, the White House the next day. And we're actually going to tour the White House. We're not just going to drive by it. Uh, and then following our tour, we're going to get a little bit of free time in Georgetown for those that want to do some shopping um, and a little bit. This is kind of known as a foodie uh, delight as well. So you'll have the opportunity to dive in a little culinary aspect. And then we're going to tour the Capitol building. Uh, we are getting the tour. And so we'll have no issues. Nobody will be arrested. There will be no insurrections or anything like that. So uh, we have a guy that is allowing us to walk through there. Uh, as we go through, no issues. We will end up with a farewell dinner this evening. We will have a fantastic toast uh, as we head back. But this one is all encompassing $22.99, and it does go in September. Uh, one of the questions I get is, well, the election's coming up and all that. I specifically ran this a little bit before all the craziness starts with the elections. Uh, I always laugh. I've been doing this for 
almost 15 years now. I always say well over a decade, but election year always turned. I don't want to travel. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and for let's see, I've now been a part of four elections as I've been doing this. Um, and at no point has it ever been impacted any travel at all whatsoever. Uh, and so I always laugh about that. But we are doing this in September. You'll be back in plenty of time. We'll have a guide throughout with us. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is our, and this one is very limited. Uh, we've had tremendous response. We do have a group out of Tulsa. We've got a group out of Oklahoma City. Uh, and so we have quite a good group going on this, but this is Canada and the New England Discovery Cruise. Um, I would say, you know, if this is something you're interested in, please let me know ASAP because we're running out of cabins. We still have a little bit of time left as far as our space. We're running out of space. I would say I'll probably have five or six cabins left on this particular tour, uh, but we're going to fly into Boston. We get a pre-night into Boston. The following day, uh, we will board the ship. We're going to go from Boston. We're going to make our way up, and we did time this at the end of September going into the first part of October, which is peak season for the beautiful fall foliage. Uh, and so we're going to stop off at Rockland. We're going to go into Halifax, Sydney, um, we do, uh, of course, run through Prince Edward Island, um, Charlottetown, and then we will make our way into Quebec City, finishing up in Montreal. Um, as I said, and I'm going to run this next year, except from, from New York to no New York. And so uh, we will have this exact same thing with a little bit of a different uh, aspect of it. But the fall foliage, this is one of the most requested tours, I think, when I used to work for Colette that we could never do because Colette just didn't do them. So I wanted to put that together. Um, and I am nailing time. This is right where I wanted to be. Perfect. Uh, I want to be around an hour or so because I wanted to get some feedback from you guys as well and talk a little bit about different types of travel uh, because I know as I'm growing and as we're doing, I know that when we kind of rebooted this program, um, there were some specific things. So this one right here, and we have all kinds of different cabins starting from inside, ocean view. We have ocean view unobstructed. We have... Um, Two different types of ocean view. We have a balcony as well uh, that are still available. I would say I have about a total of 56 people right now uh, going on this just from Oklahoma. So we're really excited about that. We've had a tremendous response. Um, like I said, I probably have five to six cabins left. Um, that I'm holding, it doesn't mean I can't get more people on. Um, if we have enough from Tulsa, uh, we will have a motor coach. If not, we will have to meet at the Tulsa airport. I'm still running through that right now. We're a little bit short and I classify you guys as Tulsa. So, um, I, what I mean by that is the gateway flying out of Tulsa. So, uh, if we have about four more people sign up out of the Tulsa region, we'll have enough to have a transfer here. If not, then we have to book it retail and you'll just meet the group there. Uh, but of course, I'll help with all those arrangements and, and all of those things. Um, so insurance ranges from 410 to 620. Uh, that is based on your cabin that you choose because it is also based on price. Of course, there is a have it all package if you're interested in that, which is very similar to the Princess Plus. This is on Holland America Volendam ship. Uh, so if you're hauling America, you can give me that information. I'll be happy to go in and get you signed up with all your points and all that good stuff. Um, and we do get the pre-night. Like I said, we're going to fly into Boston and out of Montreal. So on this particular tour, you do have to have a passport. Okay. So with that being said, I have quite a few motor coach trips. That was one of the things that, that I heard when we first um, kind of rebooted this was day trips and some smaller trips like that. One of the things that I want to address is I am would love to have more day trips and smaller trips. The challenge that I'm running into and the reason I want to address this group is because as I get more feedback from you, I can help put these things together. And I know when we had somebody, you know, specifically just doing this, that was a little bit of a different scenario. Um, I need at least 25 to be able to run any of these. And the reason is, is because motor coach costs have gotten incredibly expensive. Um, I'll just use Leslie. I mean, I, I used to be back here when Cindy Reynolds was, you know, leading these trips all the way uh, through Leslie. In fact, you know, I kind of taught Leslie uh, how Colette works and how the group international and all that fun stuff goes. Um, and so when they were running trips, motor coaches were $800 for the day, $900 for the day. Just so you know where we're at, they're at about two grand right now. Um, and so 
that makes it a lot more challenging for us to be able to operate those. And some of the feedback that I've gotten from my groups all over is, you know, and I'll give you an example. I have a hot springs Christmas tour out of Oklahoma city. Um, and it's nine 99 for two nights, three days, uh, meals, all those kind of things are included. And people are like, Oh, nine 99. That seems like a lot. And then I literally went through and broke it down for them price by price. And I, I was kind of showing them like, I'm not making a lot of money on this. Trust me. I'm barely covering my deposits and things, but I want to be able to offer those specifically for this group. So one of the things that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to send out a survey that will be a Google form. Don't panic. You don't have to have a Google account and all the things. Um, you will click on the link and I'm going to have some options and kind of what I'm looking for is uh, just some feedback from you. So please, if you don't mind, take the time to kind of put your suggestions, your feedback, because I can compile all of those things. And if I'm getting 20 to 30 people who are kind of saying similar things, you know, I can I can put those together for you because I want those to go. I want to be able to offer those to you guys, you know, whether it be even just a one overnight trip, whether it be, you know, I have a group. Um, does anybody know who Stanley Rother is, um, you know, out of Oklahoma City? So I have, you know, groups out of Fayetteville that is doing a pilgrimage this summer to there. You know, those are opportunities that I can partner with. And so on my website, which is now simply travel.com. And I put the now in front. I'm Simply Travel. My website is now simplytravel.com. Um, there is a motor coach section. It is nothing but motor coach tours. Now, a lot of my groups, I have big groups down in Texas and some of those areas. So those are already put together. It's a little bit easier. But my point is you can go through there and see some of those destinations, see some of those things. And when I send out the survey, I would love for you guys to give me some feedback on those smaller trips. Same thing, and I'll have a section for the bigger trips. Um, you know, where do you want to go? Right now, Sarah and I have kind of just been picking some destinations, popular destinations, specifically out of COVID. You know, we threw a couple risky ones in there, like Morocco and, and some of those, because those were top trending destinations. Um, but, you know, we want to be able to put trips together back where we got 30, 40 people going from here together, you know, creating that community. We haven't had that with the reboot. We've had twos and fours and sixes and some things here and there. Uh, and so with that being said, you know, we I got about five, 10 minutes before I let everybody out of here. Of course, you're welcome to get up and leave at any point. Uh, I'm not holding anybody hostage. Uh, but, you know, I would love to open it up to some feedback, some questions, anything that I can do. This was an opportunity for me. And, you know, I think we want to try to put together another one of these in the summer and then one more in the fall looking, you know, about a three a year of these kind of trips. And so it won't take me long to have some stuff. Branson, I know is so popular, but it's also very easy for you guys to drive. Um, but hot springs where I'm at is I have a tremendous Christmas trip that people come down that they love. Um, there's over 2 million lights that they put through Garvin gardens. Last year we saw elf, the musical, um, you know, we have a wonderful musician, uh, and magician. He does both, um, that has a local show. You know, there's a lot of little areas that are fantastic for two and three day type trips. And those are kind of the things that I'm going to put out there as well. So I'll have a section for small trips, a section for big trips and a section for cruising. So, um, as I know, those cruises are always very popular. So. Any questions, feedback, suggestions? You want to talk about OU playing basketball right now? I don't know. Sorry. The trip to the Ark is September 10th through the 14th. That is a five-day trip. So it's an easy into, we're going to go three nights in Cincinnati, one night in Louisville. So you fly into Cincinnati. And the reason I use Cincinnati is it's 45 minutes to the Ark and it's 45 minutes to Creation Museum. So it's kind of the perfect spot to settle. And then we finish up in Louisville for one night and fly out of there. Yes, sir. So we had one last year. Um, I am happy to put those together. And again, if it's just, if there's something specific, there's always dates that are being ran per se, like by Colette and some of those that I can help organize in too. I was thinking about another trip to um, Ireland, maybe next fall. Uh, and I was thinking about combining it with a Scotland type experience, but I haven't decided a hundred percent, but um, I would love, I mean, Ireland for me is something you can almost put every year. It's just a tremendous destination. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would, 
if, if there is a enough from here, I'll put together a specific trip. Um, if not, you know, you can give me a call and we can jump on there and tell me what you're wanting to accomplish. There's a lot of good companies that do Ireland. Colette is, I am partial to specifically for their, their insurance. Um, and the reason that we go with them is because you can cancel for any reason. There's no questions asked. I just did the Memorials of War uh, trip with a group in Ardmore. And literally yesterday, a guy broke his ankle, has to have surgery. They leave in two weeks. And guess who didn't buy insurance? Never fails. Had he bought insurance, literally could have called us. Didn't need medical, didn't need anything. My particular trips... We do need a medical reason, um, and the reason is that most insurance companies have went away from the cancel for any reason. Colette specifically underwrites themselves pre-tour because they can, and they're about the only company that does that. Uh, and so literally you can call and say cancel for any reason, boom, the only thing that you lose is the cost of the insurance, you get it back. 99% of the time in all my years I've been doing this, there's a reason you're not going um, you know, you've booked a trip, you want to go, there's a death in the family, you've gotten sick, there's a medical reason. Uh, and so it's usually not too much of an issue. If you just get a doctor's note, let me know, we'll take care of it. Um, I have switched to travel X, uh, because I was having some struggles with triple mate from a, uh, from trip mate with a little bit of service issues. Since I've switched over to travel X, it's been much smoother and we've had a lot better service and things have been going swimmingly. Mm -hmm. The dates on that one are, gosh, of course I didn't have that. Let me get back to you on that in about two seconds. What else did we have? I want to make sure. Yes. Trips to France. I avoided this year specifically. Anybody know why? The Olympics. Um, not to mention the 80th anniversary of D-Day. This year was crazy with Paris uh, and Normandy region. Um, I love France. It's one of my favorite destinations. And I'm looking actually at adding a Seine River cruise from Paris to Normandy. So it would be a river cruise. Um, how many of you might be interested in something along those lines? That's enough interest for me. So I already was looking at that. So uh, I don't even, I'll put that on definitely on the, the thing. But I was actually looking at a spring and a fall uh, date for the Sin River next year. So um, that's perfect. I know people love river cruises. So they are fun. They are easy. They are um, very educational. What else? Yes, sir. So um, as long as you don't jump out of the plane when you say jump out, no, any of the trips that you're interested in, if we know ahead of time you'd like to stay longer, all we do is book your flight for the return date that you would like. And even if that's a different gateway, it's not an issue. You know, hey, I'm, I've got family somewhere. I want to go spend a couple of weeks here. We're going to drive around. I'm going to rent a car, whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah, any of that information I know ahead of time, I'm happy to set that up. Um, sometimes the insurance will cover you already. Sometimes we might need to add more depending on how long you're really gone. But yes, any of those, um, things we can help with. And even if it's a couple of, uh, I'll use Paris or France, just cause you had said that I had, uh, I actually set up some things this year for some people at the Olympics and they just wanted a tour of, you know, the Louvre. They wanted a tour of one specific thing. We can help arrange those things too. Um, it's not necessary with the group that you've traveled with cause you're the only one staying behind but you need two tickets to something specific. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. The Academy Gallery in Florence, group stuff, no more. They don't want groups in here. A lot of these destinations. So there are challenges that we have, but we're working around how to be able to do that. Uh, the Winston Churchill's war rooms went to the same thing a couple of years ago. They just didn't want groups. Um, and so we have ways to help kind of facilitate those types of things if you need them to. What other questions or comments? Please. Yeah, and I'm going to get the date while she's commenting. So I just wanted to make a couple comments based on some of the things that Kenny was talking about. Um, one of them is 
One of the reasons that we decided to make this arrangement with him and his business was because it really offers you more opportunities for travel. You are not at all limited to just what he talks about here. Once you go to his website, there is a variety of travel opportunities there for you. Um, and we want you all to be take, able to take advantage of what you wanna do. Now, mind you, some of those can be in group settings, big or small, or it could just be you and your spouse or your partner, whoever you travel with, going on a trip with people that you don't know. So we want to make sure that all of those different accommodations and situations are available to you. And that's one of the reasons that we decided to do this. Having said that, because he is sending out the survey, um, and I believe that he'll share those with me a little bit. Um, if you have feedback of something that you really wish we were still doing, you really, the number one thing that you are unhappy about in regards to travel, in regards to travel, um, <laughs> then <laughs> please include that in your survey and let him know if you're like, gosh, I, I think this is great and the service is working, but I have to have a motor coach to Tulsa. I have to have somebody that gets me to the airport. Whatever that might look like, we are totally open to that feedback and want to make sure that this continues to be a benefit of your credit union membership. So please make sure that you take advantage of his survey when it comes out and give us some of that feedback if you have it. Okay, any questions about, yes, sir. He is going to email it out. I'll email. Uh, so I'll email it to everybody, and then if I can get Jason, maybe I'll have him just post it, a link on the Trudy Travel website. Okay, so I'll do it both ways. Um, just just showed up, didn't sign up, just crashing the party. I like it. Um, no, we'll, we'll post it on a couple of different places, just like this link. Um, I get a lot of the RSVPs that say, hey, I can't make it. Can you send me the link? We're going to do that as well. Um, the Faith and Country Tour is September 16th through the 20th. September 16th through the 20th is the faith and country tour. Um, and again, my email, uh, I'll be very candid with you. I am the owner, but I also travel a lot. I'm here. Um, so email sometimes is the best way to get me because I'm on planes, trains, automobiles. I'm all over the place. I can promise you, I will try to get back to you within 24 hour, 24 to 48 hours. Um, some of the stuff that you request, and I've had some individual things, um, recently somebody's asked me about the Wisconsin Dells. Um, I've been doing research behind some of those areas. And so some of those are, I, I don't know every place and every destination off the top of my head. Uh, and some of those I want to make sure, hey, I want to give two or three options. So um, usually some of those take a little bit of time, but emails, you know, voicemails, all those things, I'm happy to, to answer anything. But if I don't, if you call me and you don't get me, shoot me an email. You can go to our website, and on my website, there's actually a thing you can type in. A lot of you have actually contacted me that way, um, and you can tell me what you want right there on the website. You have to have your phone number and email. Boom, I come right back to you. Hey, is this what you're thinking? How does this look? And so there's multiple ways of tracking us down. My cell phone is everywhere. Um, some of you guys have had that. So, you know, if there's anything I can do, I have cards. If you want those, please let me know. But we are here to help in any way. I don't want to get away from the opportunity to continue making sure that this group travels together because that is the way this entire program was built is traveling together, but we absolutely can help you with the one-offs and the individual travel as well. Um, but we want to make sure we understand what you guys want to accomplish as a group too. So I'll have space on that survey and I will attach there. So I'll actually be able to look at those responses at any time that she wants. Um, in her marketing team, I'm sure they have, they are very good at data gathering of what that might entail and how we can, um, kind of incorporate that and brainstorm for the next year of what we want to do. Um, and doesn't mean we can't add some things late in the year, you know, about this time last year, I had a New York Christmas group that out of no, out of Joplin that we had 40 people that wanted to go all of a sudden. So there is a lot of those things that we can do very, very quickly if we have that feedback. So I plan on having that survey out and ready to go probably by next week. Um, I'll be sitting on the beach while I'm doing it, but I will have it ready to go. Uh, I'm my last, I've got a senior, so I do have to do spring break and, and, uh, you know, I know it's terrible. I gotta go sit on the beach and work, but you know, somebody has got to do it. Um, what other feedback or questions do you guys have? All right. I mean, just a little over an hour. That, that was pretty good. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you. And we'll get this stuff back out to you.
Sure do. I got lots of cards. Uh, I actually do. In fact, that was the other part that I was looking at. It's funny you say that. I was looking at Paris River Cruise. I was looking at the Rhine River. Do you have a particular time of year you're thinking about the Rhine? June, June of 2025. June of 2025. Okay. I'll put that on your website. Yeah. Um, so I literally just got off the phone with a part mine in Texas, and we were talking about the Rhine, and we were talking about the Sin River Cruise. So um, that's a perfect time. Yeah, happy to do it. Can you judge? Thank you. How are you? It's funny because you, you mentioned Normandy. Uh, a friend of mine, I helped her a couple, three years ago okay. buy a house oh, wow. in Normandy. And so she's uh, retiring May 1st, and uh, she's been uh, itching to give people a visit her before the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, she's that's already rented the place out. Oh, gosh. She became a 